I find it easy sometimes to look at myself and think, I know this stuff, I've got it together, I'm doing okay. Uh, I seem to conveniently forget the times that I am not. But while I'm thinking that way, I look at others that are struggling, maybe others that are giving me a little bit of a, a problem or a lot of a problem, and I don't ever think, well, you know, they're not going to be there where I am. But it, there's a part of you that's going, man, what a mess. And they're not going to, until the rapture, they're going to be a mess. By the rapture, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about when Christ comes back for the church to catch us to be where he is, John 14, 6. But Paul is going to talk to us about adjusting that thinking by using himself as an example. I'm Pastor Tim Holsher, and we're talking about what God's provided us to get along. And in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, Paul says, For I am confident, I stand as one that is persuaded of this very thing, that the one having begun in you a good work, he will carry it unto the full completion right up until the day of Christ Jesus. Now, I believe when he's talking about the one having begun a good work in you, I believe that that's the Holy Spirit, because he's the one that initiated. He's the one that started that salvation. He's the one that put us into Christ. He's the one that regenerated us. He's the one that we walk by him and he produces the fruit and, and a variety of other things. So I, I personally think this is a reference to the Holy Spirit in this context. But he says, he's going to keep doing that work in you. And it's easy sometimes when we look at other people, especially if we're not taught for us to think, well, I don't think they're going to make it to heaven. Well, if you believe in eternal security and you know these people know the gospel, you don't have that issue. Okay, so let's say you don't have eternal security. Well, then you look at those people and you think, and there are certain people that think this, well, I'm certainly going to have a great status in the kingdom, but those people, mm, I don't know. They're going to be on the outs. And again, that does not reflect God's program for the church. It reflects things that he was doing with regard to Israel, but not the church. The church has a different future than Israel. And we are all going to be united in everything that we do out there in the future. And so, and by the way, I had a, a friend just recently that said, if you think that the body of Christ, that different people are going to, some people are going to have better status than others in the body of Christ out in the future, that's meaning that that Christ's bride is the bride of Frankenstein, if you've ever remember that old movie, and stitched together in some parts not as good as others. And all of that's inaccurate. In reality, the one that began a good work, he's going to carry it out. And he's doing that right up until the day of Jesus Christ, till the day he comes back for us. He's working in these people. You need to remember that. I need to remember that. He's working in them. Thank goodness, just like he's working in me, because I can guarantee if you followed me around in my life, you'd see days where you would probably go, I don't know about that guy. And I think that that's probably true for every Christian. There might be some thinking, oh, no, 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 I'm doing fine. But I think they're being dishonest with themselves in terms of their attitude and how they serve. That's, well, I, I say it's my opinion, but I think it reflects the word of God. God is continuing to do his work. Specifically, I think the Holy Spirit. And Paul says in verse 7, For it is only right for me to feel this way about you all, because I have you in my heart, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and the confirmation of the gospel. And I was, I have you right here, and I know you guys are praying for me. I know you guys are all in this. And when I'm doing this, I, I know that you're right here with me in all of this. And you all are the partakers of this grace with me. And he says, verse 8, For God is my witness, how I long for all of you. I really do. I'm not out there going, oh, I'm glad I'm not over there in Philippi dealing with those people. Sometimes we can think that about others. We can think that person's really glad that they don't have to hang out around me. But that's not the case. You have believers that God has used you in their life and he's used them in your life. You as a believer really, and, and, and it's not always true, but God's work in the believers should really be causing us to long for those people, even if we've had difficulties. So long for you, then with the affection or the, the, the intense compassion of Christ Jesus. And so for this, then I pray or will worship that your love then might overflow. I like that as a translation of this word here. Still more and more in real or full experiential knowledge. In other words, you're not just experiential knowledge, but you're going on and really developing that experiential knowledge and all discernment. 
This is a mental term, being able to discern, be able to, to see some distinctions. Now, this is what he means by that. So that you may then discover, or they translate discover, or prove, to be able to put to the test and figure out what these things are, the things that are excellent. And this word excellent, I think, should be translated rather things that are distinct, things that are different. Now, what does he mean by that? Well, let's go on. So that you may be sincere and blameless or without cause of tripping people up uh, with regard to the day of Christ, having been filled with the fruit of righteousness. And I think the fruit of the right fruit of righteousness includes love, but it can include these other fruits. In other words, it's righteous activity that you're doing, which is expressions of the various parts of the fruit of the Spirit, love being foremost in that, which comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. Now, I want to go back up to verse 10, and I want to talk about, at the end of verse 9, this discernment, and then this word that's translated excellent, these things that, dis that are distinct. And he says the purpose of that, and when he's looking at this, is he was talking about that your love may overflow. And it comes to the point that there's discernment and there is distinction. My wife and I have, we're, we're, we're not going to be married 40 years quite yet, but we're getting really close. We're just, just a little bit off from 40 years. So we've known each other for a long time. I've known my wife for over 40 years. And when we stop and think about the, the relationship that I have with her, I would hope that after this time, I've become more discerning about the things that she likes and the things that she doesn't like, the things that she really needs versus things she doesn't need. And there are certain things that I've come to realize that I could go out and I get that. My wife would be kind and say, thank you. But there's maybe something else that she would rather have. I can guarantee you, I could go out and get her gifts and presents all day, but probably one of the things my wife would appreciate the most of all is if when she's talking, I actually pay attention to what she's saying and think about it and remember it. I know that because this is something that she and I've had conversations about over the years. And I have, and I admit to you, she knows this, and that I sometimes, and I, I found out lots of men do this, that doesn't excuse it, but the minute we hear the, our wife say, da, 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 we immediately, our brain starts clicking going, oh, this is what they want. We need to do this. We do this. And we miss out everything else. And sometimes there isn't anything that she wants. She just wants us to listen to what she has to say or thinks about this thing. Now, I just, I'm using that only as an example that Paul is saying, I want you to exercise more discernment. I want you to realize, yeah, what you, the way you showed love when you were first married or when you were first a believer and you were interacting with other believers in the context, that was good. But as you're growing and maturing and as the Spirit is continuing His work, you abound in that love and as a result, you become to make finer discernment between that's love. This would be a little bit better way to love and this would be an even better way to love and so on and so forth. And as a result... He says, you, you are able to discern the things that are distinct. Love is love is love, we could say. But there are things that are better. And I believe that this is what Paul's trying to say. Just because you're serving and just because you have some love doesn't mean that it's as good as it could be. And that doesn't mean to get down on yourself. It doesn't mean to beat yourself up over this. But he says, this is part of growth and maturing. And this is part of the spirit continuing to work in you is to help you develop the ability to make a distinction between things so that you love people better. I, If you're like me, you're probably thinking of people that God's put in your life and you're asking yourself, is there a better way to love those people than what I'm doing right now? Is there something that God wants me to be doing that maybe I'm not doing for these people? Things that I haven't considered because I've kind of locked myself into loving like this. I'm a pastor teacher here in the church. That's primarily what I focus on is really studying and taking time with people to teach the word and help them. But my wife's really helped me, encouraged me over the years and other believers too. That sometimes just taking time with believers is important. Just taking time to sit down and visit with them. Have a cup of coffee. Uh, I, and it doesn't always have to be that I'm teaching people things or correcting. No. Sometimes just 
taking time with them in those settings. And you know what? As you do that, I find that I enjoy doing that more and more. And I find more and more that I want to be together with saints. And I don't always have to have my Bible tucked under my arm, ready to do a Bible study. I'm sometimes just ready to sit and listen to them talk about stuff, whatever it may be, and enjoy the what I usually refer, frequently refer to as the fellowship of the saints. And I trust, at least in my life, that that's some of that discernment that comes and that ability to, to discover or to put to the test the things that are distinct. That there are some things that are, well, they say excellent here. I'd say maybe distinct, but you know what? Sometimes it's excellent because it is different than something else and it is, you recognize that there is a, even a better way to love. So with that, think about who you are in Christ. Have a good day in Him. As you think about your relationship with the other believers in your life, and as always, thank you for joining me.